The Kyushu Shinden was a remarkable last-ditch attempt at a fighter made by the Japanese in 1945. Faced with streams of US superfortress bombers flying over their country, one idea was this apparently back-to-front canard design. I've wanted to build one of these for ages, now I can find out how to put it together, right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today is build day on the kit of the week. That kit is the 148 scale Kyushu Shinden from Hasegawa. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these, want to know what you get in the box, there is already a box opening video available. If you're just wondering what the fuss is about with this plane, there is a context video available as well, which gives you a history of the aircraft and a brief look at the various kits that have been available of it. If you've got one of these, you want to know how to put it together, this is very much the video for you. Now, if you like any of my videos, please do remember, give them the Imperial thumbs up on the like button below there because every like counts. And if you want to make sure you're up to date with all my content, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and you'll be notified as any new material is published. Of course, you can offer some more concrete support by becoming a channel member, by using Super Thanks, or by using any of my affiliate programs. This week's Kit of the Week was very, very kindly donated to me by Dane Stewart. Dane, thank you very much indeed. OK, then, let's make a start on how we build this 148 scale Kyushu Shinden from Hasegawa. So I've got the instrument panel here of this uh, Kyushu Shinden, in, in fact, by Hasegawa. Get um, your paintbrush so it's got some paint in it, but really, really, really little, okay? It's almost dried. You can test it out on the frame, on the numbers of frame, get them to stand out when they just about start standing out. That's when you can make a start on your instrument panel like this and just paint it on. Don't keep going back for more paint. You've got enough paint on there already. Trust me. And before, you know, five minutes is on. There we go. So straight away, right, you've got your bezels done. You've got, you've got a hint of some of the instruments coming up and we're going to just sort of play around with the instruments a bit more first. Right, well, we can start to see a few little uh, dials and a few little sort of details in there and we can use this tiny little brush Pick out some of those details. Just work your way along. If you feel like the brush is actually drying out, then clean it straight away. And then wait for it to, you have to wait for it to dry before you can do this again. Though that's a problem. That's what's called dry brushing. You are using a minimal amount of paint. I mean, the, the amount of paint on this brush, um, you wouldn't even think this is a dirty brush, to be honest. There you go, you can pick out. All sorts of details start becoming visible. There we go. Let's see a couple more minutes, and, and already we've got all sorts of information popping up here. Now, generally speaking, on any instrument panel, there's going to be some instruments that are there to warn you of stuff. So maybe just little dabs of red to suggest some of these things have limits that you're not allowed to exceed.
and you can also sort of drop in so drop in little bits of color and you can also drop in little bits of color on some of these things you know, maybe switches or You know, you could, maybe they're fire switches. Who knows? I, I don't know because yeah, this plane didn't fly, so I have no idea what it would have had. Um, you can add, add little bits of other colours as well. Uh, another nice colour for, it seems it's yellow. There's little bits of yellow here and there. Um, maybe you know just little things like that and then and that's it that's cool then finally um, I just go ahead and add a few dobs here of it's actually PVA this is the sort of PVA I use to um, glue the cockpits together. So, sorry, I'm not, not the best at um, narrating while I'm doing these little blobby bits because they are quite, quite delicate. Yeah, this is just like a PVA that you use to attach um cockpit transparencies together and things like that so what i'm doing is i'm putting these on because they'll look a little bit like glass covers to the instruments when they dry okay and then leave them alone we'll start by assembling the cockpit the um Control column goes in. I'll just tack up a bit of extra thin and that lovely. There's this lever that goes in here. I don't, know if it's, I don't think it's on the carriage, it's a big old lever, and this isn't a bomber, so it's not a bomb race, maybe it's maybe it's flaps. Big for flaps, maybe it's under gear, undercarriage, under gear, undercarriage. I don't know what it is. It's a big old lever. And it goes in there. That's all right. That's all I actually know about that. There's the uh, rudder bar that goes in. Let's get a little bit of glue ready. Just down here. There we go. Rudder bar goes on there. The cockpit seems sort of strangely offset. Everything seems a, bit, a little bit offset. I'm surprised about that. I would have thought, you know, you, you designed everything to go in the middle and not then, you know, the pilot's seat, for example, to go in the middle and then everything else, you know, work around it, deal with it, work around it, rather than, well, the pilot's got to sit on one side of the cockpit. It's not a great way around to be doing things, but yeah, who knows? Who knows indeed whether this is accurate because we don't we don't really know how accurate this is. Anyway, I'm gonna put the um seat in now. There we go. Yeah, see it's really offset because of this huge lever handbrake or whatever it is. Let's get that right. There we go. Um, yeah, I'll leave that alone for a little bit. Oh, oh, there's a couple of other little bits and pieces that need to go in. There's this wheel that goes in here. Normally I'd say that's a trim wheel, but that's in a really bad place for the pilot to reach if it's a trim wheel. But as I said, as I said earlier, 
you know, necessity is the mother of invention. You you just go with whatever you can do, whatever you can, whatever you can got, and. Uh, Okay, well, I'll paint, paint in these bits and then uh, we'll glue up the rest of the cockpit. We can stick the rear bulkhead of the fuselage in against the back end of the, fuse, the cockpit tub here. And just let that, just let that cure. This uh, gas bottle can go in the back here up against the bulkhead. Now, there are other gas bottles in here that are black, so I just thought, well, if they're black, why would this one be black as well? So I painted it red. No other reason than, than whim, than mere fancy, but I just thought, that's what I'm going to do. And then there's this structural part that goes in. We should do it in the back first. And then into the cockpit like that. All right, so I'm going to put these in here against that that uh, shelf as it were and then resting up against these I mean it's pilot's head's going to crack into these regulators at the top but okay. maybe raise them up just a little bit like that so before I put the um, cockpit tub in just want to run through what I've done here um, so I sprayed this earlier in the interior green color so then I've mixed a little bit of the interior green with black and just run some shadows either side of these ribs and then mix that interior green with a little bit of white just to put in the white on these highlights. Now it looks really big and bold and horrible at the moment but when we've got a canopy on top it will actually look great. It will look fine because it will just pick out where the ribs are. Okay, trust me on this. So first of all, we're going to put this half of the cockpit in place, cockpit tub. There we go. There we go. And then we're going to put this instrument panel in. Like so. Okay. Next, the undercarriage bay goes in the nose like so. Which it sits on the top, doesn't it? Sits <coughs> sits on the top of this support like so. Each end. Okay, double check. Yep, with that done, the two halves can go together. I guess the two halves of the fuselage can go together. <laughs> it fits so nicely. There we go, just tape it up and um, run some extra thin around and leave it to dry. The canard nose section kind of slips in this gap. The whole thing's one piece. And there it goes. A, a couple of little pushes and pulls here and there. And that's as, as snug as I imagine you could make it. That's, that's beautiful. Of course, there's probably people shouting at the screen now saying, yeah, that's Hasegawa. But there we go. The wings go in halves. Um, line them up and glue them together. The 
bottom wing doesn't extend. The, the wing tip is a single piece, and it's quite useful to sort of make sure you've got the wing fully along. Make sure this cutout here for the fin is correct, and then just check all the other alignments. Tape it up, and um, a bit of extra thin cement to hold it all in place. The fins slide into these slots in the wings like so. The wings slide into place over the back of the fuselage on the underside like so and then click down into place like that. Not a bad fit. Now what I'm going to do with the sides here is just wait for the bottom to set first. Then I'll just raise the rings to the right dihedral and then tack that in with um, some fast setting extra thin. I've masked off the canopy sections. I'm just going to put them onto the model now. And they're going to be glued, they are going to be glued in place. Oh, that fits so nicely. Um, using the AK Crystal Magic glue. Coincidentally, sent to me by the same person who sent me the kit. So that's kind of a nice circle of life moment, isn't it? The axle for the propeller slots into the back of the rear engine and there's a cap that stops it coming out. This will allow the prop shaft here to turn should you want it to. I don't particularly care whether it does or not, but there we go. So just glue that into place. Then the rear engine cover can go on the back end of the fuselage. One of the last things you need to do for the moment at least is put on these fairings that sit on the front of the air intake. This is like the air intake lip if you like. They just need to be stuck in and be sure nice and tight up against the rest of the fuselage. And the final thing before I go to paint on this is put these cannon barrels in. They're staggered because the obviously the nose is quite narrow, so to get the uh, guns and the feed mechanisms and the uh, ammo boxes all in, they had to be staggered. The propeller sits on this back plate like this, and then the boss sits on top like so. Just glue those all into place. So now I'm going to start the pre-shading. Um, this is going to help with the uh, the appearance of these raised panel lines, which I really don't like very much. So this will help um, identify them and um, help me pick them out. Then when we've done the black, what we can do is just go along and highlight some of the panels in white, the centers of the panels in white. And let's do this around the plane as well.
so I've done the I've completed the overspray of the dark green um, I've then given it a coat of varnish to seal it in let that cure overnight so now I can start on putting on the decals now I always use um, this decal solution this is micro set I use you can use decal fix there's, there's all sorts of other solutions I, I just like micro set and the decals just sort of lay on top this has to go on to reasonably thick so not that delicate unlike some I've used recently um, it's supposed to just sit roughly like halfway along this uh, flat what's it, aileron mounting here uh, I'm supposed to touch at the front of this panel here and across it. So, so it does actually stick up slightly over that so we're going to need to set that down a bit later with some probably with a micro solder to just sort of some solvent to just let it set in properly and let it set into these these shapes on the nose on the carriage you have the main leg here the nose wheel goes on then the other half of the nose wheel assembly goes on as well goes into place just haven't painted this yet so put it into place quick dab of glue to hold it and then paint it black the nose gear goes in now it's all been put together uh, it goes in with the actuator arm pointing forwards like so the gear doors go in as well there's a little there's a hole in there where this little post sits hooks into there we go like that. and there's a hole at the back end as well for it like so the undercarriage leg goes onto the door like so then the main gear leg can go into its place here then this actuator can go in it goes into the top of the gear bay but then hooks onto the back of the leg there like that we'll just um, tack that in place Begin painting this figure by putting in base coat of shadow colour. It's quite dark brown. But um, we are going to put highlights, increasing lots of levels of highlight on this. So it looks terrible at the moment, but it will look wonderful when we finished. Likewise, on the flying suit, I'm going to start off with um, so it's a bit of a wash, really, I guess. Of this is a Russian uniform color, um, but it's a bit darker than the khaki the actual flying suit is. So, hopefully, it'll pick out some of the shadowing.
for us. Might actually go a little bit darker with this and mix in something else. Next we go to the mid-tones and just start adding mid-tones to various bits of the model. Just the bit bits of the highlights are going to come. Yeah, so we leave leave some um, space in there for the dark parts, but we add little bits of. Don't, don't worry about it too much if it doesn't look right to begin with. This will, first of all, this will dry darker than it looks. And secondly, we've got more to do. So, don't worry too much. Just use the modeling, the, use the sculpting as, as the way to get the detail. Also, just sort of do a, a wash almost just um picking out bits of the uniform here with the khaki color which is supposed to be the main color of the model but it's not going to be because we're going to put in a highlight as well and we've always already put in low lights when they say this this thing is this color it very 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 rarely works out that you're going to paint it that color I have to say I've normally found that always the bases are much darker color the khaki color here will go on but it's it's almost like an intermediate color and then the highlights will be a paler color than this and will sort of really determine what the model looks like at the end um, the colors it it will reflect and also, <clears throat> excuse me, also, there's, there's a, an issue with scale. You always have to use lighter colors for scale because uh, the scale effect is that you have to use brighter colors, lighter colors than the real thing. This is, you know, we see it on airplanes all the time. If you, know, you get these fantastically accurate um, greys and stuff like that and then you look at them on a model and you think wow that's really quite dark it's a lot darker than I thought it would be classic example is um, dark slate grey and extra dark sea grey the sort of um, temperate fleet air arm colours they look terrible on a lot of models I have to say and I've done it I've done it often enough that and I think they look terrible um, because they never really they don't pay, they're, they're fanatical about getting the colours right from paint chips and whatever, <clears throat> but not from actually what they look like when you painted them, which is uh, quite bizarre. So I've, I've yet to find a decent RAF, um, or fleet air arm, I should say. Uh, dark slate grey, they're always way too dark. or way too bright the the ethics one is i think is is just a humble one i should say i think the humble one is just way 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 too bright we just keep keep working around passing in some of these little highlights here and there and after a while just stop messing around and let it dry down and see where you are then but you already can see it's, it's starting to merge in a lot more than it looked first first time around. So we just keep adding smaller and smaller highlights. You get to a point where it's just dabbing here and there rather than actually going over the whole figure. You're just really picking up It's 
it looks really horrible and hard at times, really does. But you can always blend it down, but wait till it dries because these paints do dry a lot darker than they look first up. When you get to the really bright highlights, remember don't put them into natural shadow areas like under here because you're not going to see really bright highlights where you've got you know the biggest natural shadows. Just a little bit of on this quilting here. Look good. Okay, just leave that to dry and come back again later. There it is, the Kyushu Shinden in 148 scale from Hasegawa. Beautiful plane, amazing kit. And what a huge airplane it is as well. It's absolutely vast. You know, the, the pilot figure there puts it into some sort of perspective. He could walk straight underneath that thing without ducking his head. Beautiful kit, lovely figure that comes with it. Well, well worth building if you're into what if type aircraft. Um, at the end of the Second World War, or you're into canards, I guess, or just strange looking planes. Beautiful kit, well worth making. There it is then, not um, a crazy amount of detail. Um, raised panel lines, which I'm not really a fan of, but you know what? Incredibly good fit, and it's a pleasing end result of a really quite crazy looking plane. I've enjoyed making it. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, please do remember. Imperial thumbs up on the like button below, please, because every like counts. And if you want to see more, do please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they are released. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Take care and goodbye.